we're getting to the end on systems of homogeneous equations we've done that of so let me write this out we are looking at homogeneous systems of equations we've considered the real and distinct we've considered the repeated roots and then the last thing to do is the complex root so there's the last video on homogeneous systems of equations again i'll take a simple example here so assuming i have um, a system of this form three negative five one negative one of the unknowns to be x1 x2 this homogeneous because the last or the source term here is zero so that's my matrix form that's the first thing to do the second thing is to find your eigenvalue these are the simple steps to follow eigenvalues is of this form it means i have it as um, three minus lambda negative five If you should find a 2 by 2 determinant of this, I'm going to get um, lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 2. And the eigenvalues here gives me lambda equal to 1 plus or minus i. This is the eigenvalue. This is the complex root. Now the next thing is to find the eigenvectors. You would realize that if I want to find lambda at all 1 plus or minus i, I can't find the eigenvectors because it's going to be 3 minus 1 plus or minus i, and that will be something complex to do. So it means I can take just one part of the solution. I can have it as 1 plus i or 1 minus i. 1 is a conjugate of the other. You can clearly see that. So any of them should do. I'm going to take the positive part. So I'm saying that if you choose the negative part, it should still work it. Or it should still work out for you. So this means we're going to have 3 minus 1 plus i. Negative 5. 1. Negative 1 minus 1 plus i of some v1 v2 is equal to zeros so this is going to give us um, 3 minus 1 that is 2 plus i that's this negative 2 plus i if we want to find the eigenvectors here i want to avoid fractions so i'll take row 2 for my substitutions it means i have it as let me use a different marker here i have it as v1 minus um, what do i have well here is going to be minus i yeah because it's minus one plus i so minus i so negative minus two minus i of v2 equal to zero I can simply have it as, uh, let's see, let's see, V1 will be equal to, if everything goes to the opposite side of the equation, I'm going to get 2 plus I of V2, yeah. This means that if V2 is said to be 1, I'll have my V1 to be 2 plus I. And so the eigenvectors here is, 2 plus i against 1. The next thing is to write your solution. So realize these are simple steps to follow. For metrics, you write eigenvalue, you find eigenvectors, and you write your solution. The solution out here is going to be y equal to some a t v. So I introduce my eigenvector. C1 cos beta t. And then the second part sine beta of t. So I told you that um, we would always expect an imaginary part in our eigenvectors, and that is what you consider an i part. To cater for that, it means I have to initiate the imaginary as part of my C2 solution. Hence, by substitution, if lambda equal to 1 plus or minus ib, 
I can see that A is 1, B is also 1 because it's plus or minus I. So I have E, T, my eigenvectors here, and then C1 cos T because B is 1 plus I, C2 sine T. This is your final answer. You can leave it this way or you can go ahead and simplify it. Simplifying this, you want to write this as some raw part of the solution plus the imaginary part of the solution. What we are interested in is in the raw part of the solution. So let's see how we can expand this. I want to multiply through, this is a multiplication. So I want to do the expansion in that angle. You know it is 2 plus i multiplying c1 cos t and then this same 2 plus i would multiply i c2 sine t and I can go back to 1 multiplying c1 cos t plus the same one multiplying i c2 sine t okay still on the expansion you take your time and do that so this is going to be 2 c1 cos t plus i of that then plus 2i c2 sine t plus now you know that i times i is negative 1 right so it means i'm going to have instead of positive it's going to be negative 1 or so let me just say negative c2 sine t then the lower part becomes c1 cos t plus i c2 sine t we are still simplifying it's just so we expand here here what we did was to expand what are we expanding we're expanding this expression now from here i can group like terms i'll write it as group means i'll group those with eyes and those without eyes so i have it as et look at this if i want to group them this one goes hand in hand with this guy and then this two would also be as one unit so it means i have 2c1 cos t minus c2 sine t as one aspect plus i part of it c1 cos t 2c2 sine t and those at the bottom still remains as it is. That one's already in its simplified form, or it's already in a good form. Okay. So how do we write the raw part of the solution and then the imaginary part? If I should split this into two, I can have this as a raw part and this as the imaginary part. It means my final solution is in the form AT um, 2C1 cos T minus C2 sine T and then the lower part of it as one aspect of the solution plus the same AT takes the other part of the solution. So this is my raw part and the imaginary part and this brings me to the end of my solution and the split up. This seems cumbersome but it's easier to follow. When you write your final solution in this form, you expand, after expansion you group like terms and then you can split it up. Someone can further simplify this and say I wouldn't want to bring cos t out because it's common here. Or you just leave your answer in that form if I factorize et 
out and factorize cos out you realize that for cos to be out i get 2c1 as a first coefficient and then i can get c2 as a second coefficient and then here is c1 the same thing if i bring at sign out in these terms I'm going to get C1 and then 2C2 and then I have here C2. So any of, of this simplification should help you out in whatever you want to do. Alright. So I think I'll leave my answer in this final stage. So I don't confuse you all. And so this is the end of the examples on homogeneous systems of equation in the next set of videos we are going to consider <laughs> a higher differential equation of non-homogeneous it means i'm going to get a system of non-homogeneous equations to solve see ya